you will say, but someone will ask, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body do they come? In verse 36, he says, you foolish person. You know, the Greek is absolutely blunt. It doesn't say you foolish person. This is softened for English readers. The word is fool. He punches you right in the nose that you'd ask a question and unbelief about what God can do. He's just punched you in the nose. Whoever this hypothetical person in who's objecting, he says, fool. What you sow does not come to life unless it dies. Now remember, he's already talked about the harvest, planting of seed. This is something that is a normal part of all human history. In fact, the planting of seed was part of what God did in creation. Seeds fell to the ground and died, decomposed, and out of that process came forth life, even before sin was in the world. From the very beginning of human history, there is the process of the seed falling to the ground and creating new life as it has decomposed and then something new comes up. He says, do you realize that this is the principle that sowing of seed requires death and new life? He says, and what you sow is not the body that is to be, but a bare kernel, perhaps of wheat or of some other grain. Unless you are an extraordinary horticulturist, if I have a handful of mixed seeds, you look at it and say, I have no idea what those are. They're seeds, but who knows what they're going to grow? They're whatever. It could be weed. It could be uh, some other kind of plant. And he says, you need to realize these seeds, when they go in the ground, they look like one thing when they go in. When they grow, they're entirely different, far greater. In fact, the seed of a giant redwood is very, very small. It creates that giant tree that goes hundreds of feet up into the heavens. Entirely different. And yet it was always implicitly present in that little seed. Paul says, don't you realize that right from the creation of everything, there was the principle of new life coming from death. And that new life from death had a diversity. Everything isn't the same. That what dies and what rises are utterly distinct. The picture is human beings. They're going to rise. And when they come out, they're not going to be what was buried. But it's going to be just as much organically connected as the seed and the plant. He says in verse uh, 38, But God gives it a body as he has chosen, and to each kind of seed its own body. This is God's creative purpose. It's what he designed the world to be when he created the plants of the field and said it's very good. This death and resurrection cycle is grounded in creation. Fascinating. And then he says, now, I'm, I've been talking about uh, botany. Let's go to zoology. Okay, well, how about the animal world? He says, for not all flesh is the same, but there's one kind for humans another for animals, another for birds, and another for fish. He's saying, take a look at your Thanksgiving dinner table, and you'll see there there's fish there, and that's turkey, that's ham, uh, that's filet mignon right there. You know, that's going to be really good. And if you're really hungry, you might have some of all of it. You know, flesh is different. different animals, people, we're all different. And so he's saying, you realize God has put diversity in the world right from the beginning. That is, there's something different that's likely to come from what's planted and what's raised from what he first put there. So botany and zoology, but then he goes from that to astrophysics. See, Paul is quite an educated man here. He says in verse 40, There are heavenly bodies and earthly bodies, but the glory of the heavenly is of one kind and the glory of the earthly is of another. There is one glory of the sun and another glory of the moon. And another glory of the stars, for star differs from star in glory. He says, we all take it for granted that you can't look at the sun. Its glory is so great, it will blind you. But the gentle hues of the moon, well, you can stare at it for hours. And then you look at the stars, and you see some are brighter as they twinkle, and others are dimmer. And they, some are just blurred together in the Milky Way up there, and the glory that's in heaven. All glory, but there's differing glories. And so Paul is saying, there's a glory of our human life. 
There's beauty, there's strength, there's prowess, there's skills. But you know what? There's a far greater glory. Just like there's different kinds of flesh, there's going to be a resurrection of the body, far different. In fact, just as there's different seeds that requires death and new life, that's what's going to happen. This is God's plan. It's been true from the beginning. Botany, zoology, astrophysics, it all is showing us of God's great design. The creation is pointing us to culmination, 